بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتابه الكريم ولا تكونوا كالذين تفرقوا واختلفوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not be like those who have divided and differed. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited us. And remember when we said, Anahi you feed the tahrim, that when you have a prohibition in the Sharia, then the asal of that prohibition is that it's something which is muharram, something that is uh, impermissible. It's haram. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited for us to divide. If we reflect upon this ayah, ya habatifillah, then we'll be fearful of splitting between the brothers and sisters. We'll be fearful of it. And we will be fearful even in differing that at least we will question and we will look and research before taking a position, especially if you differ between Ahl Sunnah. We're not talking about differences between Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Bid'ah. So we have to make sure that our parameters are correct. The parameters, the bounds that I'm talking about is when Ahl Sunnah is differing. So we should be fearful. You don't want to believe that you're guided based upon a blind view, a blind opinion, taqlid of someone who is not, a, their qawl is not a hujjah that their statement is not proof, it's not dalil from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. It's not dalil necessarily from the understanding of the Nusus even. But rather it can be refuted and it can be accepted and it just depends on its degree of muwafaqa malhaq. That its degree or its level of being in accordance with the truth. So we do not, so we should have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Really, that's what the mu'min, the mu'min is afraid of these kind of, this fitna. And is afraid of this, not rushing to jump into fitna between the brothers and sisters. Not rushing to jump into fitna every time it comes up, but rather the believer is fearful. That's what we should be. That's the trait that we want to have. Because we don't want to fall into the ayat. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا Don't be like those split and they differed because the Prophet Sallallahu said that those people who differ they'll be in the fire except those who are in accordance with the Sunnah and the Sunnah if tarakat al-Yahud al-Ita wa sab'een firqa wa if tarakat al-Nasara al-Thinatayn wa sab'een firqa wa sa taftariku hathi umma la talatha wa sab'een firqa kullaha finna lil wahida kunna man hiya ya Rasulullah qala man kana ala mithri ma kana alayhi wa sahabi the Prophet ﷺ said, the Jews break into 71 sects, Christians into 72 sects, my um into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. They said, who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. Radiallahu ta'ala majma'een. So, habita fillah, fear Allah. So many ayats in the Quran that illustrate this point for us and tell us to not break, break into groups and sects. And that's exactly what happens when we make al wala wal bara. We make love and hate upon an issue that those before us didn't make that issue, make it a, a, a point of love and hate for. That we make love and hate based on individuals. Oh, you don't love my sheikh? You have to be a mubtadi'ah. Oh, you don't agree with my sheikh on one issue? You have to be mubtadi'ah. What's your position on this? Sheikh so-and-so refuted him. Sheikh so-and-so praised this one. Sheikh so And you make ilzam of the people and you force the people to take a view. This is very dangerous. And a beautiful statement by Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah in the meaning, and it's, uh, we'll have to find it and actually you'll find it, that we've talked about it and we've went through this statement before, the exact nuts of the statement. But what it means in general, from Mijmu'a of Fatawa, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, is that it's not for the mu'allam, it's not for the teacher. 
to force his students or force them into to hazb, to be a, a hizb or a group in accordance with his view. And as the Salaf used to say, La yurf al haq bi rijal, lakin yurf al rijal bil haq. We don't know the haq by men, but we know the truth. We know men by the truth, meaning we put men on that scale of the truth. Is what he or she is saying in accordance with Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? What he or she is doing, is that in accordance with Kitabi Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Or is it in opposition to that? And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us with ilm and nafiyah, wa rizqan tayyibah, wa amalim wa taqabbilin, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.